What's the crack lads? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another training guide slash complete breakdown of one of the players in the fans choice. So you will already have known and you can tell from the thumbnail that we are going to be focusing on Danny Parejo. Now this guy lads, I kind of glanced over him. He has featured on a hidden gem series of mine, but I wanted to do a proper video on this guy because he's an extremely interesting card especially now that you can get this version of him with 365 days on the contract. Now, we're going to talk about why I really rate this guy. He did have previous cards before, but this is probably a better version of him in terms of just overall ability and being able to train him up exactly how you would like to train him. Now, there was an identical card that kind of like came out as well, which we'll talk about in a, in a bit. But this guy is a really, really solid card, right? Straight off the rip, if you've got a player that has got 80s in a lot of key stats without ever training him up, just as his base level, like 30 levels there, right? Double touch, one touch pass, true pass and weighted pass, low lofted pass, Marseille turn, cut behind and turn. And of course, he also has pinpoint crossing, long ranger, long ball expert as his play styles. This guy is as close as you're going to get to kind of like a Pirlo-esque figure. Obviously, you're not going to get the speed and the acceleration, but the way he glides around the pitch, the way he moves, the way he's able to block passing lanes and also be able to just like put the ball wherever you want it in a game that's becoming increasingly difficult to string passes together that are not just one touch, ticky tacka, you know, ping pong passing, right? This guy is the perfect orchestrator. I'm still working on my playstyle videos. I will be dropping a couple of them this week. I have a load of new content coming this week. But this guy is really exciting for me. If you are a newcomer to the game especially. Because you really learn the fundamentals of the game. And what works and what doesn't work. But yeah, we will train him up. We're going to have two different builds of him, right? But as I said, and to finish my point. If you have a player like this. That has got 80s across the board at his level 1 base it's going to be a very solid build when you train him up, right? So we are going to go over to eFootball DB, as we usually do, and train up uh, Danny Parejo here. Now, as we said, right, he does have 30 levels to go, which is quite decent, right? Obviously, if you were to have maybe 35 levels on this card, it would be god tier, like it would be insane, right? Because we do have a couple of wasted stats, which we'll, I'll get into in a second. Now, as I already mentioned, this is the version of the card that is on the database now at the moment and that is in the game the fans choice but they all also released this card which had three less offensive awareness three better or two better lofted passes so this card here that we had that they released before um was from a spanish pack that they released a while back this was arguably an identical card with just two plus in better in lofted pass so it's probably a slightly better card but I would say that it's not really a concern because you're obviously getting the offensive awareness, which I think is a key stat for the position that we're going to be playing him in, right? Which is going to be an attacking midfielder build. And then we also have a complete kind of sit back orchestrator build, right? So this first build that you're seeing here, I mean, it's an insane attacking midfielder build, lads. You don't have blister and pace, but you've got 90 balance, right? You don't have huge speed, but you've got solid stamina. You don't have brilliant uh, finishing, but you have got really nice kicking power. So every stat, right, and it's a unique type of feature of this card with this player. Every stat that is weak, you have another stat that kind of overcompensates for it, right? So like what we're talking about here is just maxing this guy out to the limit to be an offensive weapon, right? 83 offensive awareness. On the other card, on this card, that would be 80. And I think that when you get the boost to bring that up to 85, it will mean that your attacking midfielder is going to be just so good at getting into those positions. 85 in an, an attacking midfielder is really key, right? Even though this guy's card is down as a CMF, he can play AMF, which is going to be a 96 overall with this version of the player, right? This build. So... We're going to focus ultimately on his ball control, dribbling, tight possession, low pass, lofted pass. And of course, then we also have the balance, which is a key stat for this guy as an AMF. OK, now place kicking or free kicks and curl. That is a bit low because we haven't trained up the shooting. We'll get to that in a second build in a minute, which is more of an all rounder build. Right. But again, when you have a base like this and you're training a card, right, you can also decide yourself. And this is what I'm saying that comes down to it is that like. I'm talking about like, you know, you're talking hundreds of hours of research that I have done since the game first launched of testing things, you know, doing everything right. But sometimes you do need to decide, well, I shoot a lot more, you know, I shoot a lot or I don't shoot at all. Like me personally, right? I would probably take the base that we have here. So 11, 8, 11, 4. And I would probably reduce the passing down to maybe about 80, maybe, maybe about 92. I would try and get the finishing up to about 80. The reason for that is because me, being the player that I am, 
I like to have the option of being able to shoot with players. I know that the the shots have been a bit nerfed and you can't do long range curlers and you can't score a lot of goals, but I still score goals outside the box probably a lot more often than other people that just kind of walk it in and that's their style of tiki taka. So if you are a player that likes to shoot a lot, I definitely recommend to 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 pump up a bit of finishing, especially if you can get it to 78 because you get the boost. That also brings up your free kicks if you need a free kick taker and it also brings up your curl. We're going to get a boost to that. So that is arguably a better attacking option if you wanted to go that route. But then, you know, similar similarly, if you do not shoot at all, if you don't shoot outside the box and everything is kind of a tap in, right? And everything is a really easy finish, then don't waste points on something that you won't need yes it will give you a better overall on the card but what's the point i mean you don't need to do it i mean that's like you know it, it just it's i was trying to think of an analogy there but i'm I just i just couldn't even i couldn't even do it right it's like it's nice to have it but you still you know what i mean you still want to be able to use the stats as best you possibly can so that's why i would probably you know double down on the offensive awareness even a bit more or you could do the passing if you wanted to go that route as well. Go two more into passing that when your passing stat gets boosted up with the player form arrow, it's going to be past 95, um, which will be nice, right? Now, the second build of him kind of takes into consideration what I was already saying, right? We're going to be playing an all-round type player, okay? So this build is very similar to the last one that I had. So this is 7, 4, 10, 9, 6, 3, and this is 0, 10, 8, 12, 4. So they're both similar builds, but they have very different stats, including aerial strength and shooting. So if you are a kind of a, looking for a, you know, a really savage build that's going to be able to get up and down, not the fastest, but when he gets the ball, you have loads of options with the 80 finishing and stuff like that. This is kind of where you want to go with it. Now, for this build and this build, I would definitely say that the shooting build should be this one. You know, you should go into the shooting with that one and ignore this one with the shooting because you haven't got the acceleration that you have in this one to break the line. The balance is a little bit lower that if you do break the line, you're not going to be able to get those shots off a lot of the time. And the offensive awareness isn't as high on this build either. But this build is also going to get that boost to the curl. So if you're going to be sitting back in the pocket and just picking passes like Pirlo or Xabi Alonso, you will be able to just spray the ball around, long, lofted, everything. You're going to get that boost to curl there. You're going to get the boost to there, there. You're going to also get the boost to kick and power if you are taking shots with the 80 finishing. You could take a few long range bangers. And even if you don't score from them, you can get, you know, tap ins or rebounds or spills from the keeper or else corners. If you've got a target man in the box like Collar, Drogba or Lewandowski or Benzema or Cavani or whoever. So, yeah. Now, there is one more kind of change I would make to him if you were playing a CMF. And that would be to probably take down the dribbling a little bit. We can leave the tight possession at 88. And I would also probably leave the pass and everything at 88. I'd probably take down the acceleration to maybe 70 if you don't need to go that high with it. And I would also take down the physical contact if you're just going to be playing as an impact player to bring him on for 20 minutes or so, right? Now, with this build that we have here, this is just a kind of a slightly deviation from it. I would probably max out, right? And this is a bit of a strange one. I would max out his defensive capabilities to be able to press from the front, especially if you're a center midfielder and just sitting there. You still have every stat. You're only going to be playing this guy after 70 minutes or so, right? After 70 minutes or so, you're only going to be bringing this guy to control the tempo of the play. You'll have excellent tight possession. You'll have excellent low pass and lofted pass. You'll also have excellent balance. And then you'll have the defensive engagement, the aggression, tackling and defensive awareness to, to really uh, complicate this card a little bit more. But yeah, I do think that that is probably the best build of him. But yeah, definitely just wanted to highlight him. I know a lot of you guys that watch me love this guy. So let me know what you think. Are you going to spin for him? Have you been using him for a while? He is definitely a bit of a hidden gem with those stats. So many variations in how you can build him. But let me know your, the crack with you lads. And I will talk to you in a bit. Peace.